If you've been wondering what Cricut Infusible Ink is, well, I'm here today to tell you what it is, how to use it, and what to use it on. Because like sublimation, which this is basically Cricut's form of sublimation, it is an ink-based product that when you heat it up, it transfers that ink right into whatever you are putting it on. So the only difference here is that with the infusible inks, you can get it already on a sheet where it comes in fun patterns or solid colors. You can even get pens and markers of all different colors that you can draw on copy paper and use that to transfer it onto your products. It is a lot of fun, it's very versatile, and if you've never done sublimation before, and you're just curious if that's something you would be interested in doing, this is a great way to get started so that you're not investing a ton of money on special printers and special heat presses and things like that. This is just a fun way to make some really cool projects. Now, the type of products you can use these on have to be a very high polyester count, meaning if you buy a shirt, you cannot use this on cotton. I typically either buy the specific shirts from Cricut that have this infusible ink stamp on it, or if I find shirts that have a high polyester count on it, the percentage, the higher the better. I think rule of thumb is anything over 65%, but I find that getting the 100% polyester or the 85% polyester works the best. It just takes the ink on much easier. But you can also use things like coffee mugs and water bottles. I have here a cinch bag, pot holder, keychain, lanyard things, wristlets, and my kid's favorite, which I get these from Pro World, which I will put their website down below, are sequence bags. They also carry pillows. And this stuff is so much fun that you can sublimate or use these infusible inks on. And I always like to keep a lot of these just on hand because my kids love making these for their friends' birthday parties and things like that. So as you can see, there are so many different products. It is not limited just to t-shirts, but the sky is really the limit. Pro World is my favorite website to go to to buy sublimation products. That's what you would search for, sublimation blanks, and you can use any of these infusible ink products on those. So today what I'm gonna do is show you how to use the ink transfer sheets, how you would um, cut those out, what settings to use on your Cricut, and um, we're gonna be putting these on some fun headbands that I'm going to make for my kids as just a fun little back to school thing for them. So let's hop on over and get at it. Here I have my Cricut infusible ink transfer sheets that I will be using today. I'll be using a pattern from each of these boxes. And then I also have the two kid sizes of headbands that I got from Pro World. And these fit perfect on my kids. I have a six year old and a 10 year old and I couldn't have had a better fit. These were perfect for them and they love these headbands. They're super stretchy and they take on this infusible ink really, really well. Now the first thing you want to do is measure these so you know how much space you have to work with your design. This is about a two inch wide and then the length you're going to double it because we're going to go all the way around both sides of these headbands. And then once I have the measurements I'm going to head over to my Cricut design space and we're going to pick out the design for these. And for today, I'm gonna to be using the mermaid scales for my six-year-old and the cheetah print for my 10-year-old. Now over on Cricut Design Space, I pick my retro font and pick the text box and I'm gonna put in my daughter's name. 
And then what I'm gonna do is head over to the shapes tab on the left hand side. And what we're gonna do is create like a guide for knowing how much space I have to work with for this particular size headband. So we're gonna grab a shape, the square, and then we're gonna unlock this up in the top portion here. Hit the unlock and you can type in your measurements. I think this one was like a two by 16 or something. And then you go down and hit the grid. And what you basically have here is just the outline of the space that you have to work with. I'm going to grab both of these and hit center. And now it is in the middle of where the headband would be. Next, I'm gonna go down to my upload file folder and she loves rainbows. So I'm gonna go over and find some of the rainbows that I have previously uploaded from Creative Fabrica. I get most of my fonts and graphics there. If you haven't been over there yet, you guys, you've got to check it out because they seriously have so much stuff. Um, I'll leave a link down below so you can find where that is. And I'm just going to grab a couple of these and add it to my canvas. And then I will shrink these rainbows down and just kind of play around with the placement inside this guideline that is here and figure out what I think would work best. Next, I will grab a heart shape from the left side shape tab and also just move a few of these around until I'm happy with what it looks like. Now doing the same thing, I'm gonna grab a square and make my guide line for my next headband after putting in the proper um, dimensions and writing in her name and again grabbing both of those and hitting the align tab up at the top to center and grabbing the different designs that I want on here. She is a soccer player and that is all she wanted on here. So she's gonna get a lot of soccer balls. I'm just gonna speed through this process because it is the same and then we will talk about how we are going to set this up before we send it to cut it. As I was going around changing all of these objects to the same color so that I could just keep it all on one mat as it was all coming out of the transfer sheets, I remembered I can just go over to the right hand side and hit the color panel. Here you just drag each piece down to the color that you want it to be. So if you have different colors like in your rainbow that you want to cut out of vinyl as certain colors, you can just drag and drop these pieces. It's a lot quicker guys and I just kind of forgot I could do that. Now I'm going to hit send it over to the mat and as you can see this is not what I wanted. So I am going to go back cancel this and then I need to attach my rainbows together because I do not want to have to uh, piece this all together with the infusible ink transfer sheets. That's just too much work. So here I'm going to move this grid uh, guideline out of the way and click this rainbow and hit attach down at the bottom and that will keep it all together when I cut it out. It's all just gonna be the same print from my infusible ink, and that's the way I want it. So now that I'm done with that, I'll go back up to make it, and now they should be all held together when it's time to cut them out. And there they are. Now, because this is infusible ink, you need to mirror your image because you want it to cut out backwards. As you flip it over onto your products, it will be facing the right way, just like if you were using heat transfer. Vinyl, it works the same that way. I'm going to separate all of these so I can have my cheetah print 
transfer sheets on the bottom and all of the rainbow and hearts up at the top with the mermaid print. Because I'm going to be individually placing all of these on the headbands, I'm not going to worry about having them um, locked into place as if I was going to just be putting it all on at once. So this is the way I'm going to do it. And now I'm going to hop on over and we are going to find the infusible ink transfer sheets and you just need your fine point blade for this and we are ready to continue. Pulling out the transfer sheets that I want to use, I've used these before, that's why they're kind of in funny shapes, but I'm going to just cut off some of these extra pieces and then you really want to be careful not to touch the ink side a lot. That will just get on your, not really get on your fingers, but it could pull off some of the ink and then you won't have a nice um, dark color when it transfers. So make sure your hands are clean and try not to touch that other side of this as much as, as little as you can. Here I am just using my X-Acto knife. That is what I have found to work the best in cutting these. I don't know why Cricut decided to roll these up and put them in tubes because it just makes it a little more difficult to work with these. Trying to get them flat on your mat when they're curly is not always the easiest, especially when you're trying not to touch that ink as much. But as you can see here, the ink side goes up because when it cuts, as you remember, we mirrored the image so it will cut everything um, reversed in that image and then you take the ink side and we'll be putting that down on your material. So my mat here is super sticky. That is what will work best for you to hold these curly transfer sheets down the best. I really wish they would just make these in flat 12 by 12 sheets but that is a battle for another day. We do what we can and this works okay. You can see my cheetah print one at the bottom is kind of curly, kind of bubbly, but that doesn't really seem to make much of a difference when it cuts. So now we are ready to put this in the machine and let it do its thing. When it's all done cutting, I like to flip this over and pull the mat away from the material that was just cut. With some different materials, doing it this way, it just helps prevent it from folding and leaving creases in what you're using. With this stuff, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, it's just easier to remove it this way as well. As you can see on this Cheeto one, it actually completely folds up on me at the end here but it doesn't make much of a difference after I take out all the extra pieces from weeding it and it all works out just fine. Now with this stuff, instead of your typical weeding process, you're gonna crack the paper. That sounds really weird, but you just wanna kind of crease around where those cut lines are and on the longer pieces you can see better what I mean, you kind of um, fold, not fold it, but kind of crack it. You'll hear it when, when you do it. And it just loosens the parts that you want to take off from the pieces that you need to save. And you can just pick these pieces right off. During the, the process on the soccer balls, you'll see I use my little pin tool a little bit more because there are some tiny little pieces and you really don't want to be touching the ink too much on the parts that you're going to be transferring to your material. So I do use my weeding tool a little bit on some of this just to avoid touching all the parts around it. And then I will just kind of speed through the rest of this so you can see this process of cracking and picking out those little pieces. 
Another side note is on some of these, you can see there's some white paper left behind. That is totally fine if that is left on there, as long as there isn't any of the ink part on it, because if there's any ink, it obviously will transfer onto your material that you're pressing it onto. But if it's just these white pieces left in between some of the parts, it's okay, don't stress about it. It will not transfer anything over to your finished product. Now taking my heat press, I'm going to set the temperature to 400. This is an Easy Press 2, which is the one that gets to 400. I believe the first press doesn't get that hot. And I will also be setting the time to 35 seconds. Now, before you do anything on material like this, whether it's shirts or headbands or pot holders, you wanna take your lint roller, or as I have here, a piece of tape. I can't find my lint roller, but the tape works fine. You just wanna run it over the entire surface that you're gonna be pressing the ink onto just to remove any extra little pieces of lint that might have been on there to begin with. Then you're going to want to take a piece of cardstock. This one I have folded in half so I can fit it in here better. And this will help prevent the ink from going through onto the other side of the material. It also helps protect your mat a little bit from any of that ink running over onto it. I've done that in the past where I've used the infusible ink and didn't cover my mat and it went through after I had flipped it. I was doing the two-sided shirt and it left some of that ink on my mat and later it actually gets onto this headband. So you'll see later I cover it with uh, butcher paper as well. So now I'm just going to be heating up this headband a little bit just to remove any of the moisture that might be in it. And I'm going to do this to both of the sides because I am putting this ink transfer sheets on both sides of this headband to make the design go all the way around. And then we are going to wait for this to heat all the way up to 400 so we can add the transfer sheets to this headband once it has cooled down a little bit. Now we are at 400 degrees and I'm going to start with Sterling's name and just kind of eyeball to where the center of this headband is. I'm going to be pressing this down. Now these transfer sheets, they are sticky like the heat transfer vinyl. When you peel it off, it's on a sticky um, paper. And I'm just going to take a little bit of heat safe tape just to hold down this top part here where it's kind of curling up because again, Cricut likes to put these on rolled up papers so it's kind of coming up on this side. I'll just secure that top part down and then I'm going to grab my butcher paper and I'm going to cover this up so that none of the ink transfers onto my heat press because that would not be good either. You could also use a Teflon sheet if you have those, that would work well here as well. Now we are going to press the green Cricut Go button and we will speed through this to have it heat up for 35 seconds. When your time is up, you're going to carefully lift this up all the way um, try not to shift around that paper at all because you really don't want that transfer sheet to wiggle around. It will leave what's called a ghosting effect, which will just mean that the design is going to shift a little bit and it'll give you some kind of like shadowing on the edges of your design. And that is not what we want here. We want to leave all of this ink. As you can see, this transfer paper is completely empty and all of the ink is now on this headband. And this turned out perfect. I love how this worked. And as you can see, it stretches 
and that ink is in there. It's not like vinyl, it's not gonna pull off or crack. My little Sterling likes to pick at vinyl, so any shirt that I make for her, it always ends up having pieces pulled off. So I have decided with her, the infusible ink is the way to go. So any shirts I get for her, it's polyester. And now I'm just going to place on the rest of these little pieces, trimming this extra uh, sticky part off to get it all on there. You do not want to overlap your pieces where that transfer backing, the sticky part, if there's a lot of extra and you're layering like this and you cover something up and say your rainbow is over the top of your actual heart, it would maybe affect the way that this is going to work. So make sure your colors and things are not interfering with that sticky part. If that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, drop it in the comments and I will try to clarify what I mean with that. Um, but get all those pieces down. We're going to cover that again with butcher paper. And with this heat press, I can't say I would buy it again just because it doesn't seem to heat evenly. The middle of the press seems to need a lot more pressure just to get the even heat all the way through. So I press really hard on anything I do with this press just so that I can get a good heat all the way through. And now one headband is done and I'm just going to speed through the second one for Lily here with her soccer balls. The process is the same and it's pretty, pretty easy. Once you get the hang of this, you can get a lot done in a short amount of time with these transfer sheets. I know I kind of breeze through a lot of this pretty quickly. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I'll have all these products listed down below so you can see where I get them. And if you find value in this type of tutorial, drop a like, hit that subscribe button. My name is Sarah. I love doing all the different crafts and I'm here to help you on your crafting journey. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss anything that's coming up in the future. I'm just going to iron out some of these wrinkles and get it all nice and flat. And these two headbands are ready to go. I can't wait to show the kids what they look like and they fit perfectly. So it should be should be good to use for school or for soccer or whatever they choose to use these for. And there you have it. The two polyester headbands that I got from Pro World. I will again have that link down below along with some options you could get just off of Amazon that would work great for this. And if you would like to see how I would apply this to any of those products that I showed you in the first part of the video, drop it in the comments and I'd be happy to do a tutorial on how to apply it to either a coffee mug or a sequence bag. Just let me know. I'm happy to help.